where do you guys invest here? I mean, Chamath, like, do you care about how the market's positioned or how you're positioned in this election right now? And based on how we're seeing markets trade and what these kind of macro indicators are telling us, or are you just business as usual, heads down, invest and build as you always have? Yeah, I, I think that you can't trade these things. And any attempt to do it is probably a level of false precision where you're going to lose more money and there's a lot of slippage in even just trying to execute it. I mean, at the beginning of the year, I said the breakout asset was going to be Bitcoin. I think it looks like it's going to be the resounding inflation hedge asset for the next 50 or 100 years. So that die has been cast. I think you're seeing the last vestiges of people using gold as a rational economic insurance policy, but I think the future is specifically Bitcoin on that dimension. So I guess you could trade that, you could speculate on that. I think the question that I've been grappling with is, in my scenarios, what happens if Kamala Harris wins? What the markets do? And I actually think it would reverse a lot of these trends over like the last month and a half. Like I said, I really do think that there's a repositioning, rebalance component to everything that's happening right now. So I don't think there's much to do unless you have a very specific bet that you want to make. I would just keep my head down and keep building. Are you yeah. in the same place, Sachs? Are you, are you JKL? Are you guys trading at all? Or I mean, I, I think trading is a mistake. Time in market is better than trying to time the market. And as I said before, where is all this money going to flow, all this spending? But uh, asset or class, tax right? I mean, that's the, that's the key question, right? Like, yeah, do you change I mean, I, what assets you own? I don't think so. And I, I, I do think there's another thing that's worth sort of unpacking here, because when you do see people feel like the economy is working against them, all kinds of interesting movements start, cultural movements, et cetera. And I think that's what we're seeing in this election is people who believe in capitalism and free markets and people who don't, people who believe in free speech, people who don't, people who see themselves as victims, victims and then other people who see them as creators. And I really study a lot of like what young people are doing. And I don't know if you guys are watching sort of the anti-work movement or the fire movement, which is financial independence, retire early. A lot of young people now are looking at financial markets, whether it's Robinhood or Coinbase or Price Picks, whatever market it is, young men especially. And they're saying, I need to control my destiny. I need to, this capitalism is not working for me. I need to own equities. I need to make trades. And I need to retire early and have experiences because the capitalist system is broken to some extent. And then there's another group of people who are just anti-work. And there was this term back in the day called NEAT, not employed, not being educated and not in training. Basically, the people who are called the unproductives. And if you look at the peak engagement and employment in our country, and Japan has similar trends, uh, although they're probably 10 years ahead of us. In this. Sounds, sounds anything but NEAT. <laughs> yeah, it's not me. <laughs> sounds sounds uh, terrible. Six, but we, we peaked at 68, 69% labor participation, and we're 10% off that, maybe more. Maybe we're at 61 or 62. I think a lot of people are going to give up because the debt is going to be so crushing that the logical thing to do if you don't think you can get out from under it might be to move in with your parents or two or three other people, tighten your belts and enjoy life and go skiing and, uh, and, and go have experiences. And a lot of young people are electing to do that. In other words, they're well, opting out point. of the American dream. Sorry, to your point, the one thing the one thing that I realized with a lot of young men that Jason, I think you're you're really hitting the nail on the head is a lot of them now do not view the job that they do as their only path to economic independence. And if anything, they may do a job, but then they're actively trading on the side something, crypto, options, whatever. They're on Robinhood, they're using Coinbase. Because it's almost like they've separated in their mind that the job they do will never give them the financial independence they want. And so instead, they're going to do that job because they like it. Hopefully, they love it. But then separately, they're going to go and speculate to try to make money. It's a really interesting thing because I had always been taught you earn your wealth through the job you have. And so if you wanted to make yeah. more money, you have to ladder up and do something different. Yeah, but I, I so think that that's not true. That that idea has been sort of decoupled now. That's a really interesting change in how people approach work. I, I, I call them Gen Bet. Like they're the generation that believes on. There's just like subset of them. It's not all of them. A, a number of them are just quiet quitting, and they just don't believe in capitalism. And then there's this other group which are 
like trying to get control. I call them gen bet because they just want to bet on themselves. And, you know, and uh, if they don't get wrecked by the financial markets, cha- trading options, you know, and, and doing but the other, picks. sorry, the other, the other thing I'll say just in recruiting a bunch of people at 80, 90 over the last three or four months is there is an enormous difference that I have seen psychologically in the people that are 25 and older hmm. versus the people that are 25 and under. And I'm, I'm right. calling 25 as a rough number, but there are kids that are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old that are off the charts good. They're motivated. Yeah. They're hungry. They're like, let's get after it. And they are honestly different in the way they approach their job than folks that are in their late 20s and early 30s. These I folks think they're are the first generation who didn't go into debt in college and didn't buy into that. Like, so they might, the, the millennials ahead of them might have like taken the bullets, you know? Yeah, the folks that are in their late 20s, early 30s, and I'm not trying to generalize or disparage, but they lack a level of motivation. Again, generally speaking, that the youngest folks in the workforce have, and that also that people in our generation sort of have. So they're sort of sandwiched in between a very different way of approaching work. And and as a result, they stand out, and I don't think they're standing out for all the right reasons. Hmm. Well, the majority now of young people, the number I believe, and Nick, if you could pull this up, 57% of Gen Zers want to be influencers as their primary career now. That the idea of working a job is almost like a secondary option. The primary option that everyone would strive for is to be uh, an influencer. And this number has grown considerably, continues to grow. And in fact, if you look at the uh, the rest of this report, this was out of a morning wait, wait, did console. Did you say 50% of Gen Zers aspire to be influencers? Correct. Okay. 57%. So as their career, or just they want to be influential and build a brand around themselves, I wonder. That's what they want to do for a living. That's what they would That's like what to do. That's what they want their paycheck to be. Interesting. That's well, what they, they want, want to be their in- paycheck They to want be. to be independent, and I don't think they believe this. They believe the system's rigged against them. And why wouldn't you think the system's rigged against you if you went 150 or 250K in debt and you couldn't get a good job? Sachs, as a successful influencer, how would you advise the youth (laughs) on their career choices? Well played. Yeah, look, I think that believing you're going to be an influencer is like believing that you're going to be like a rock star or movie actor or something like that. Pro athlete, yeah. Pro athlete, yeah. Yeah. It's like a one in a million shot. It's just not a great thing to want to design your career around because it's just very unlikely to happen. So I think you're better off finding a career that you're passionate about, but where you're actually adding value. The world doesn't need 50 something percent of the population to become influencers. That's kind of crazy. I mean, it reminds me of a line from Fight Club where <laughs> Tyler Durden says, we've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. And we're slowly learning that fact, and we're very, very pissed off. And that I mean, was Gen X. That was Gen X, yeah. So <laughs> that was they're, us. Headed, they're headed for a, uh, a Fight Club-like realization about this. Sachs, how do you advise a young person on, there, there's this temptation to go and spend all this time making content and pursue that as your career, and that's a life opportunity for you now. It's more free and open, they would think, than perhaps being a movie star or a basketball player used to be. So I think it's it's just uh, important to recognize that if we ourselves are influencers, the, the reason why we're not being hypocritical is that none of us here, with the possible exception of J.Cal, ever set out to be influencers, right? <laughs> we did something different. We actually had a career and we did yeah. something interesting. And then as a result of that, maybe people want to listen to our pod. The idea that you can just go be an influencer without having actually done anything interesting, what's your credential for that? So what I would advise is just people should go do something productive. And then, you know, if it leads to other people wanting to hear from them, then that that's good. But setting out to be someone that other people should listen to without having any experience or having done anything productive in your life, it's like, why should we listen to you? 